Hey guys, this is what if Superman was in the boys part six. Now, the last time I left off, I introduced Parasite. Um, oh, I really got more on the depth of Parasite's character. I also went into detail about how uh, Superman is kind of dealing with Parasite's whole sucking energy out of him and sucking him dry paws. But yeah. So we start our story off, last time we left off, sorry, I'm like doing this in the uh, kitchen. <laughs> last time we left off, we see that basically majority of everybody already talking on the news about the particle accelerator. And basically not just yet, people are starting to realize that soups from the world are starting to go missing slowly and surely. Eventually we could switch to, well, uh, well, episode seven since last time. And so you get seen eight years ago at Vought Tower as the deep, a translucent, and all the other characters just chilling as we see that, well, we see a younger version of Butcher and his wife. Now, we all know what went down here. We all know the tension in the room and Homelander showed up and how he tried to, you know, let's just say target Butcher's wife. And we, we, we all know what happened here, okay? We all know what happened here. Don't have to get into detail. But we get switched to, well... Uh, well, Yui and Starlight's whole date and everything, as we see that Butcher's watching them from afar. As Butcher's watching them from afar, we can switch to Clark's story. After Clark's whole event with, well, everything going on with Parasite and him also being last minute saved by A-Train, we see that A-Train in his continuity is, well, kind of being interrogated by some of the Vought employees or Vought specialists saying that what's going on and do you know this guy and blah blah blah. Adrian said he was in the area doing some patrols as he was supposed to take down a staged, well, saving as the, he thought this was the staged saving. As he's never really encountered other people with super abilities being villains. So he thought it was some sort of new publicity stunt to boost his popularity. But they were told that it wasn't a part of their publicity stunt and it was a real actual threat to America. And then try to convince home, uh, A Train to give them as much information as possible. A Train is saying he didn't know much of anything, as them just scoffing and telling him to leave now, as A Train would have left. Now, still, I'm not gonna make A Train a good person off rip already, because let's be real, A Train is an absolute jack in these first couple seasons, especially season one, and we really see his character shine and grow later on in the season. So I'm basically gonna make A Train's character a lot more involved and make his character a lot better in this continuity with the help of Barry Allen's character in this universe. Now with this going all on, we get switched back to Yui's story after I was talking about A Chain being interrogated. Yui would have been doing his all you know freaky dinky with Starlight as basically what we going on, let's just say a little 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 salt to song a little sauce to song to say you got that you got that dog you got that dog in him. And you got that slog on it. No, I'm f***ing up with this. <laughs> Let's just switch to basically what happened is Homelander basically tells everybody about everything going on. About how we have basically terrorists in our midst. And he gets shown pictures and photo proof of all the boys' members except Clark. But he is shown a back image of Clark in the red hoodie. Now he is confused on who this dude Clark Kent is. But he really wants to figure out who he is. Now he comes back to Bush's picture, realizing that he has seen him before, maybe a couple years ago or not, but he doesn't know for sure. But he does get switched back to that one day, basically at the uh, race with A Train, and he realizes, I know this dude. I know him. As they get switched back to, well, uh, I think uh, where Deep is. But we get switched back to Deep's character, and honestly, Deep with this whole situation about him getting kicked off the boys with everything going on. Um, him get kicked off the seven with everything going on. And him basically being, you know, basically out and out for his whole situation with Starlight and everything like that. We see that, uh, well, the Deep, since the character he is, the type of character he is in general. You see, I did change his character a little bit. But in this universe... Atlantis is real, and it's a, basically a part of, well, society, as people know a little about Atlantis, and mainly, it, uh, what was it, the deep is the border between between Atlantis and, well, the Seven and America, and all, the rest of the world, as 
Very pretty simple. Atlantis has a lot of technology and basically you can try to do an all out world, an all out war against, well, let's just say America everywhere. So basically, they're trying to comfort deep as much as possible that they know for a fact for the simplicity of everything going on and how much evidence is stacked against the deep. We can't really keep them in the seven and that will bring down the sevens publicity and their basically everything like really down. So they start to try to convince deep to kind of just stay to himself and stay off the radar in a nearby penthouse. Now we got, well, the deep, his character, we already so. His character is very much way worse in this continuity since he's already entitled to being a freaking Atlantis, Atlantean. Him having all the abilities and powers of an Atlantean being a lot more stronger than canon deep. And also him being very much preppy and also very cocky in his well, self. Because let's be real here. He's still like a funny character, but he, in general, he is very much a snotty brat because he's born into... Atlantis royalty. Pretty it's simple, he's literally like he was he was raised to be freaking cocky and think he was better than everybody else. Even before the whole his mental like blocks in his head, his 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 cockiness in the original was boosted to like one thousand, like over nine thousand type shit. But we can switch back to A Train. Or we can switch to A Train story after he was really get investigated by the by employees, him doing some training with his brother. Now, as he was training with his brother, nothing in his continuity would change too much, but he was told by his brother or asked by his brother what happened on the news with that parasite dude. As, well, pretty much we see that Adrian would be confused saying, well, I don't know. They said it was, I thought it was publicity. I thought it was something that was going on, but turns out it was some sort of complete different person. He was actually a real threat. As he would be confused saying, you're lying to me. Ain't no way there are rogue soups around. That's, that's terrifying as he said yeah i know but we don't really know for sure if it's really gonna go down like that as they start to talk a little bit more and more as we get switched to clark and clark's main story i said earlier but we're gonna be really switching to clark as a character not everybody else being affected by his whole situation with parasite clark would have been on a nearby beach around uh well the city as he would have been around like galveston beach getting over there as he would have been chilling around that area as he would just be doing a little suntan, as he would just try to think and contemplate about everything that's going on and where he is in life right now. He's being hit day after day with all these situations and all these problems as eventually he just looks over as he's getting well approached by old man. Old man talks to him and tells him that it's a nice day, huh? And while well, we see that Superman or Clark replies to him saying, yeah, I guess it is. I guess it is, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've been down here. Old man replies with, well, it's been a long time since I've been down here too, son. You have to realize maybe something's going wrong with your life. I've been here then and there. But at the end of the day, you always have to realize that doing the right thing always brings the right people together. And doing the right thing always brings the right type of, I guess, outcome, no matter what happens in between. The ending and the beginning are completely different. As he walks away and very much Superman's confused, or Clark's confused, so he looks up as the man's gone and he's alone nowhere to be seen. He uses X-ray vision, seeing that the man's like completely gone. He can't realize where he is. Like he's he realizes he's just completely alone on the well beach. And he's very much confused on what the hell just happened. Biggest switch back to Deep. Now Deep's character, him being basically told off that he might get booted off the seven and he's very much kind of like being like what do you, what do you mean <laughs> i'm the king of atlantis what what, what 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 are you talking about like what what, what are you talking about like, he he gets pressed he gets pissed i mean he's getting heated but we can switch back to well starlight and the boys getting told by well let's just say homelander about everything about how they're gonna how they just outed out Huey Butcher or Huey Stedman or Huey whoever the hell his name is and the other boys members about who their identity is and everything like that he she does get pressed by Homelander a little bit as Homelander presses her and tells her to relax and yada 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 but he also tells him about the whole threat about well rogue soups going around he tells him about how the particle accelerator in Star City blew up a few weeks ago or a few days ago as it realizes his attention, he's been seeing more spikes of petty crimes happening around 
America. And Vod's getting on top of that, but he has to be, he was told from one of his employers or one of his intel workers that something's going down in in the city and around Star City, especially Star City. As they start to talk about what's going on, as pretty much what happened is a Chain says, what are you talking about? As Homelander says, thank you for asking that question, Homelander. Thank you for asking that question, a Chain. Turns out there are already registered soups that we know that have gone off the radar and are showing more abilities. As he basically said that one of the scientists he's close to and fought told him that something's going on with rogue soups and soups that are already in the radar are able to exhibit more abilities and powers and something's going down and it's going down fast, especially in Star in Star City. Now they start to talk about more and more about it. Originally Queen Maeve asking, What are we supposed to do? As he says, Well, we're the seven. We're supposed to save lives, right? So let's take out the let's take out the trash. As Homeland is vendetta with this whole situation, he sees it as a big opportunity to bring in more of the supervillain type of pandemic and kind of going after them. So in this continuity, Homelander doesn't just straight up spread Compound B around the country or around the world just yet. He eventually will because mainly he just wants to have more villains and more threats to go up against and to eventually try to get more publicity and more, I guess, in, more, I guess, pull to their... Uh, vendetta into getting into you and getting into the uh, I guess United States military uh, movement since the whole thing about that nameless soup saving the plane and basically saving a couple other people around the city is starting to push and pull that vendetta for them to be introduced into the military even more so so the, they're they're this close like they're like they're so close they're getting into that area but we get switched to well the boys as they're talking in the bakery and they're just you know chilling talking about everything that's going down now butcher obviously still presses you about his relationship with starlight but it's all cool everything really goes exactly the same but they do talk about everything that's going on and they do try to they do try to confront a train as they start to confront him so they confront a train a little bit about his well uh well, his relationship with Pop Club, but also about Compound V and everything like that. As A Train goes on about how, well, the same thing, you know, how what I did was a mistake, Yui. What you did was on purpose. Who's the real villain here? You, you, I killed your girlfriend, you killed mine? As he starts to get real pressed, and honestly, overall, starts to press Yui even harder than he was in canon. Now, we see that. Well, Yui starts to taunt him about everything, but Yui starts to get really pressed and actually starts to contemplate why is he doing this in general and why is he even doing this ever? Because, well, he's just hurting someone else just to feel his own pain, his own suffering, and his own mourning. As you see that A-Train overall is just really pressing on him because we both know Yui's just hurt and he's just doing this to feel better, but it's not right. He was starting to really think about what he's doing, and maybe it's not right to be doing this to him, because A Train is just a person. He's just, he's just, he's a sick person, but he's just a person. Now we see that Kimiko still breaks this nigga's kneecaps. I mean, brother, bro took his kneecaps. Corey Kitchen took his ankles, but nah, Corey, Corey Kitchen takes ankles, right? Nah, bro broke his kneecaps. Nah, Kimiko took them. But mainly, we get switched away from that. Now, what would happen after this? Mainly, everything else in the continuity would have gone similar to the same, but still, the whole big threat, the whole big change in the continuity, still being the particle accelerator and soups around the world being changed and modified to be better, stronger, and honestly, going into a life of crime because of their newfound abilities. And mainly, those soups being under the radar of popularity, being pushed to get more, well, money somehow some way so we get switched to basically a new character this new character being a girl that was modified by the particle accelerator given her abilities but she wasn't a super four now she sees we see that she has some sort of electric abilities but we see that she just starts to walk around eventually her finding out about deep and seeing him in public they start to talk a little bit as the whole situation the whole scene with deep having that whole you know let's just say 
tango with that random girl. That random girl is actually this universe's version of Livewire. Livewire talks to him. They eventually start to get freaky dinky as he show as she shows or he shows her his gills. Now his gills are still the same thing. Atlanteans in this world are like the same anatomy as the deep's gills wise because they still have the weird nasty gills on the abdomen. So they start to talk a little bit as he's a little bit stronger, so he doesn't really get you know taken advantage of too much. But his basically uh, gills are the same are the weakest part of his body though because they're like a literally an open organ on his body. But they start to talk a little bit as eventually they kind of show a little bit of an interest beyond just sex. So we see that they have a little, you know, something going on. But yeah. But besides that, we get away from that. Now everything else in the continent we got some of the same. But we see that Clark overall, all of this do after everything is going on. Clark is just doing a whole entire like arc like he's just trying to figure out who he is and why he came here to begin with but then you realize at the end of the day they like, came here to save lives to help people to be better now we can switch away from one of the uh shoots clark would have been finishing up as he would have been walking back to bot tower as he would have been introduced not introduced but him being caught off guard by a call from yui as he would have picked up the call as you would have told him that he Needed to see this on the news as he would have opened his phone, looking over the news app, seeing that it was some sort of new soup around or a new villain, basically causing mayhem in Town Square, in Star City. Now he would have ran over. He would have ran over there, realizing that he was stronger and faster now as he has reached up his main strength. Now, basically simple, his body's Kryptonian uh, anatomy would have started to go into overdrive because his body was losing more energy and more energy. And once they build up, like how you rip your muscles when you exercise, they grow back stronger. So basically with this whole healing process he was doing, he's faster and stronger. And he's obtained a real good grasp of his abilities, like his extra vision, his laser vision, his super speed, his flight as well, and everything else like that. As he started to fly over there near Star City, as eventually he would have came down there and seen this new threat or his new villain, as it would have been some sort of weirdo. Now, Clark would have shown up in his comically, you know, red hoodie with the blue jeans and the tennis shoes. As he would have shown up, as they would have all looked at him saying, Hey, it's the name of the superheroes. It's, 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 it's Soup. It's Soup. As basically resembled the na uh, name or the, uh, I guess, the uh, internet gave him the name Soup as his superhero name, Soup. As he would have started to get into a fighting stance with this new villain or whatever him having some sort of similar abilities as a waterbender him calling himself water wave as he started to fight a well superman or clark as clark would start to run out the way as he would start to super speed around him grabbing a nearby middle pole and knocking the absolute snot out of his face knocking him clean out it would have been a really quick fight but then basically chanting his name was eventually homelander would have shown up homelander would have looked at him as he would have speeded off homelander following after him and this one shit gets real deep as Homer starts to follow after him, trying to figure out who he is, trying to laser or see through his mask, as he starts to laser him down, saying to stop now. Homelander starts to, Homelander starts to run after him, as basically Clark starts to run and run and run, as he gets tanked by the back by one of the lasers. As Homelander lasers him in the back, as he gets sent flying into sand, as Homelander tries to see through his mask and see him, but before he can do that, he gets hit with a laser vision of his own against his face, knocking him off his rocker. As pretty much... Well, Clark stands up and soups off flying in the sky, faster than a faster than Homelander could keep up. Homelander looks up as he looks at his face, seeing that it's kind of like slightly sunburned, and basically he has a nosebleed since the way the pressure and the force that basically sent him flying into the sand because they got you know near the beach area of Star City. Basically, for simple, he basically was shook if that he got hurt this bad. And you got a little, little, little bit of like a slight burn, slight, slight burn, sand burn on his face. As he would have gotten up being really pissed off saying this new, new soup in town. And he can give him a run for his money. I think it switched back to everything else in the continuity. Butcher still gets, you know, ticked off about how Mesmerizer snitched on them. So he goes on after Mesmerizer and, and kills him. Like in continuity. And we also see that whole talk between Starlight and... Queen may go on, but they also talk about the whole thing about the new soups and the whole particle accelerator incident that was going on. 
because they also talk about how they are both going to be quantified and basically given the role of being real soups and going after actual real villains and real bad guys. And Star Wars is kind of happy by this, but he's saying that majority of the soups are going to be handling are probably going to be probably fake because bots are really on top of trying to take down the most soups and the most people that were given abilities doing this whole particle accelerator incident. As they start to talk a little bit more about that, but we can switch away from their story entirely. We can switch back to a Homelander. Homelander being pissed off, but wanting to figure out more and more about Butcher and also about this dude, saying that maybe the guy that made him could possibly know about this dude that's nearly the same strength as him. So he goes after he goes after his creator, his I guess quote unquote scientist father. With this talk, we get shown that Homelander's real name is John. And he was born in a test tube and blah, 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 yada, 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 you know, the original story. He also gets told about, well, Ryan's fake birth. He gets told that Ryan's actually dead or his son is actually dead or his child is actually dead as Butcher's wife gave, well, he, it was mainly, it was a miscarriage because he basically lasered through the mother's womb or crawled through the mother's room, drowning in his own spit, yada, 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 you know, the usual, usual story. So what happened doing this, Homelander is kind of shocked by this, but he also is told that I'm sorry that you're my biggest mistake, my biggest failure. As he just says, you're sorry now? He walks off and just pissed off about everything as he flies away. He gets right back to Clark. As Clark is basically walking down the street, as he gets told by some random man in the shadow that to come here. Homelander gets really, uh, no, Superman gets really confusing. Well, who the hell are you? And he lays his eyes up and basically is about to get into a fighting stance as the guy says, wait, wait, stop. I'm here to help you. He takes off his mask and it's... And I'm going to leave out here, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Good like and subscribe. And as always, guys, have a blessed day. And I'm just going to hit you with cliffhangers after cliffhangers. I'm going to make you guys invigorated. I'm going to make you guys piss off. But I'm going to leave it out here, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Was like, guys, like and subscribe. And as always, guys, have a blessed day. Deuces. Yeah.